When it comes to the racial wealth gap, author Mirza Baradaran once said, In fact, the average unbanked family with an average income of around $25,000 spends about $2,400 per year, almost 10% of its income, on financial transactions. For the best personal finance content, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a video twice weekly. In this video, we once again visit the history of the racial wealth gap. We've done a lot of research and compiled our fact finding to give you complete information. Moreover, we also take reference from the book How the Other Half Banks, which is written by Mirza Baradaran. In this book, Mirza Baradaran explains how some banks exploit American inequality by highlighting one of its prime causes, unequal credit. As a quick reminder, I'd like to see you invest in the channel by clicking the like button and helping me reach my goal of 50 likes. Also, if you're enjoying my content, consider subscribing so I can help you with personal finance and economic concepts every week. Subscribing is free, and you can always unsubscribe later. What is the racial wealth gap? The racial wealth gap means the difference in median wealth among different races in America. This is mainly the difference between white people and other racial minorities, including Blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. The racial wealth gap in America is much more significant than people imagine. In 2017, research was done on white and Black Americans from the top and the bottom of the national income distribution. This research reveals that they overestimated progress toward Black-white economic equality by over 25% of the current reality. Furthermore, a 2018 research report reveals that the median black household has less than 11% of the median white household's wealth. Racial Wealth Gap Statistics In 2016, the median net worth of white households was $143,600. In contrast, the median net worth of black households was $12,920. Furthermore, Asian American households have more wealth than white households. The wealthiest Asian Americans held 168 times more wealth than the poorest Asian Americans. At the same time, the wealthiest 10% of white households own 121.3 times more wealth than the poorest 10%. From 1983 to 2000, white households' wealth increased by 14%. But during that same period, black household wealth decreased by 75%. One of the main reasons behind this is the increase in the number of extremely poor black families. A report reveals that 25% of black households have zero or negative net worth. In comparison, only 10% of white families are this poor. Many black families own nothing and are in debt. This decreases the average wealth for the entire group. Historic root of the racial wealth gap. Slavery legally prevented blacks from building wealth until the 13th Amendment in 1865. Moreover, until the Civil Rights Act of 1964, Jim Crow laws were followed in the South. These laws describe what jobs black people could take and how much they could get paid. These laws also restrict where black people lived and traveled. Public transportation, parks, and restaurants are separate for black people, and they are not even allowed in some towns. In 1935, the Social Security Act was implemented, but excluded farm workers and domestic workers from accruing benefits. During that time, most blacks lived in the U.S. South, where they were working as farm workers and domestic workers, due to which they never received Social Security's wealth-building opportunities. After World War II, several civil rights movements were initiated, and laws were made to reverse legal racial discrimination. However, all these things provided mixed results, and the discrimination against blacks owning wealth continued. Wealth Building Policy Currently, the federal government actively promotes wealth building strategies. Every year, the federal government offers $347.8 billion in tax cuts. This is done so that people can build wealth. Nearly 40% of these tax cuts promote home ownership, while 41% subsidize savings and investment. However, these cuts more help the rich than the poor. The wealthiest 5% of Americans, which mainly include whites, take the maximum benefits of these cuts and get 53% of the $347.8 billion. Whereas the bottom 60% only receive 4% of these tax cuts, and the last 20% of taxpayers, which mainly include blacks, 
receive 0.04% of the tax cuts. In reality, the policies that are intended to decrease the racial wealth gap are doing the opposite. How the Other Half Bangs by Mercer Baradaran, Key Highlights In this book, Mercer Baradaran shows how a significant portion of the population is forced to wander through a wild west of payday lenders to cover their emergency expenses and pay for necessities. The author shows how these things happen because of deregulation that began in the 1970s and continues till now. American banks were initially created as a public service. Banks need to rely on credit from the federal government to issue low interest loans. But currently, the corporate mega banks with trillions of dollars in assets and political influence make them a private industry that is free from public service. By doing this, they are abandoning less profitable, low income customers and only favor wealthier clients. Mirza Baradaran proposed a solution. The federal government should re-enlist the U.S. Post Office in its historic function of providing bank services. How to Reduce the Racial Wealth Gap There are various ways to reduce the racial wealth gap. In my opinion, the best three ways possible to reduce the racial wealth gap are 1. Improving education access. Equity in education is the first step to bringing everyone to a minimum standard. A study conducted by the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis shows that there is a correlation between high income and the education level of one's parents. Education provides people with skills to get well-paying jobs. If an individual has a well-paying job, they may be more easily able to manage their finances. Investing in human capital is one of the best ways to increase the median income and reduce the racial wealth gap. Number two, changing taxation. Progressive taxation, which can be described as imposing higher taxes on the rich than the poor, can be very beneficial in reducing income inequality in the United States. Most low-income families spend a large amount of their pay on basic needs like shelter, food, and transportation. A tax cut for low-income families will allow them to have an improved living standard while saving some money and increasing their wealth. And number three, boosting minimum income. Increasing the income of poor people, which mainly includes black workers, will provide them with an opportunity to save their money and build wealth. Although there are various rules about income regulations, income inequality still exists. If there is equal income for both black and white Americans, then black households' wealth can grow by $11,488 per household, which will shrink the wealth gap by 11%. If the federal government wants to prove that America is a financially fair country, then the government needs to do something to reduce the racial wealth gap. Our video posits a few low-cost societal changes such as those described previously. The book How the Other Half Banks by Mirza Baradaran sheds light on the economic racism that is often felt by black people, but unspoken and minimally addressed by those in power. Now that you know so much about America's financial history, you might be motivated to invest. Invest easily and effortlessly using acorns. With acorns, even your spare change can grow into a mighty oak. Explore the new acorns early feature and help your children save for their future while you shop. Use my link in the description to get your child started investing in under three minutes. If you're a YouTuber or are considering starting a YouTube channel and you like my editing style, click the link in the description to get a free trial of my software. Thanks again for all the support in the comment section. And a special thanks to Cindy Alexius, who was our new comment section champion for this week. Make sure you check out her channel as she helps you with budgeting and debt repayment. Link in the description. Join the discussion for a chance to have your comment featured. I read and reply to all the comments I get. Check out these videos on your screen on how to improve your finances. If you like this video, hit the like button. It helps out a lot. Be sure to subscribe and share the video with your friends. Check the links in the description for offer information. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.